the tape. Both are 29 years old. Harrison is the taller fighter, both coming in at weight, just under 154 pounds. Harrison has the reach advantage. He has that longer jab. Charlo has been the pro a little bit longer. That was his first professional loss. Looking to avenge that tonight. Brian Ketty here ringside with Lennox Lewis and Joe Goosen. Uh, look, a lot of excitement here. Let's first talk rematches and how things go. There's a lot of theories as to how things will go the second time around. So let's go through it and see what happened with some notable fighters got back at it for a second time. Leo Santa Cruz beat Abdomaris the first time when they fought again in June of 2018. He won again. Both fights went 12 rounds. Santa Cruz won both. Canelo Alvarez and Triple G fought to a controversial draw. They came back again, and this time it was Canelo Alvarez beating Gennady Golovkin to take the middleweight championship of the world. November 23rd was a rematch. We all called that fight together. First fight for Deontay Wilder, a knockout over Luis Ortiz. He knocked him out again. It was difficult, but he did knock out Ortiz. Wilder did with one shot. And then this one did go from a loss to a win. Anthony Joshua lost to Andy Ruiz. First time around, got stopped at Madison Square Garden. But in the clash on the dunes, it was Joshua who was able to outpoint Ruiz. Coming in lighter, Ruiz came in heavier. There was a lot of boxing competition there, and it was Anthony Joshua who regained his version and his portion of the heavyweight championship of the world. Now we get to this fight. How will things be different? Joe, I know Harrison thought that you guys calling the fight actually thought Charlo was going to win. That was part of the whole um, vantage point from the fans as well. He brought it up to you in the fighter meetings, thought that, hey, you thought Charlo was winning. I won that fight. I know you've cleared things up. Is there detente now in the air? Yeah, I mean, look. It was a controversial fight to begin with. It was it was close. They gave it to Harrison. There were fans that thought each guy won the fight. So there was that dispute. But, you know, that's water under the bridge. The important thing is, is that we got right to the facts about what Harrison really wants to do in this fight. And basically, he went to a training camp. He says, I have to do the same thing I did in the first fight times three, which means he knows that he's got to put out more of an offense for the fact that uh, that's what was in dispute is that he didn't punch enough in the first fight. So he's determined to do that in this fight. On the other hand, uh, Charlo, you know, he's got to upset the chess player because Harrison is the chess player. He's going to have to knock the chess pieces off the board. And he said that's about right, uh, that that's what he's going to do. Lennox, what happened second time around? I, I think it's uh, basically the same fight. Obviously, a lot more energy. They want each other so bad. And, you know, Harrison is, is the chess player, and he's the boxer puncher. And you got Charlo. Charlo really comes to fight. He wants to knock you out. And, you know, his record shows that he loves knocking people out. So this is what he's here for. And it's going to be an exciting fight, There's, you know. Everything's being said. Now we get to the fight. So Actually, you got to back up what you say. And tell Joe I meant no disrespect. Joe, I meant no disrespect. <laughs> Will you stop apologizing? I don't even know what you're apologizing Just for saying, anymore. You went after it. All right. But this yeah. is going to be a great fight, Brian. Should be interesting. I won't apologize Again, for that. There's a huge, there's a huge buildup. They were supposed to fight in June. Harrison was injured. Charlo wasn't buying. Time now for the rematch. My name is Jamel Cholo. They call me the Iron Man. Here it comes. Tonight, I'm going for my 33rd win and 34 fights. I want to put Tony to sleep. I am the best junior middleweight in the world. Jamel Cholo, first thing out of his mouth when we spoke to him this week, Hey, I'm walking first. So Lennox Lewis, he knows the difference. He is the challenger in this fight. And as you pointed out, level of aggression should even be higher. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he wants this fight so bad. Nobody likes to lose their title. And then when you lose your title, it's like you have an urge to get it back. And it's like you, you want to sacrifice whatever you need to do. And what he did was really get in camp, get more serious. And now uh, you can expect a better Charlo coming in the ring because he's worked hard and he's focused. Jamel Charlo and his twin brother Jamal Charlo again rising stars in the sport. Jamal is still unbeaten. He's moved up to middleweight. Jamel is here at 154 pounds. He was stunned by that decision. To that point, it was a very close fight. Lost a lot of those early rounds that were close. He won rounds, Joe, emphatically late. He'll have to get on that course earlier tonight. 
Yeah, look, I, I think both of these guys, there's a sense of urgency within both camps here. I think both camps feel they both have to raise their game from the last fight. And I, I, I think they're going to start out quick. I don't think there's going to be a, a feeling out too long of a feeling out process in this fight. I'm really excited about it. I, uh, it's, it's like there's been a lot of talk for a year now, and we're finally at the moment, and this is it right now, and I can't wait. Jamel Charlo is in the ring as the challenger and the champion is on the way. My name is Tony Harrison. Right SOS, they call your boy super bad. Going for my 22nd knockout, Detroit style. Who was born for nights like this? No more talking. Saturday night is home, Detroit style, baby. Fight. We're expecting a lot more activity from both after a year filled with bitterness. And Harrison acknowledges. He says, "No, I, I know my, you know my uh, what I what I did in the last fight wasn't as much as I'm going to have to do in this fight." So he acknowledges it, and, and, and so does Charlo. Charlo says he's going to step up his game, throw more punches, put more pressure on. So I say that both these guys are, they have a realization of what they really have to do. The tension has built up for a full calendar year. Tony Harrison defending his title tonight against Jamal Charlo. Obviously in top shape, a very serious young man, a chance to reclaim what he lost one year ago. Let's go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the Toyota Arena here in Ontario, California, Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Lions Only Promotions and TGB Promotions and sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, the President Mauricio Suleiman and our judges. Tim Cheatham, Dr. Lou Moret, and David Sutherland. All right, fight fans, here we go with a bout you've all been waiting for. A rematch scheduled 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Ontario, California, it's time for the main event of the evening! <laughs> Introducing to you first the challenger fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with green and orange trim, hailing from Houston, Texas. He weighed in at already 153 and one half pounds, with an outstanding record of 32 wins and only one defeat. He has 16 wins coming by way of knockout. 
currently a top world contender making his sixth world title appearance tonight seeking to avenge his only loss and regain the title ladies and gentlemen please welcome the former wbc super welterweight champion of the world jamel iron man Char And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with gray trim. He is fighting out of it, representing Detroit, Michigan, and he weighed in at 153 and one quarter pounds. With a record of 28 wins and two losses, he has 21 wins coming by way of knockout tonight making the first defense of his title ladies and gentlemen please welcome the reigning and defending wbc super welterweight champion of the world tony super bad harrison and here's our referee in charge now to give instructions jack reese oh right here please Right here on this side, looking at Bruce Lee. Thank you very much. Good, no good, no good. Tony, right here, please. Tony, right here, please. Facing me, facing me. Top piece. Poppies, please. Hold in. Poppies? Okay. Senior, these trunks are high. Everything below here, it's not going to matter. It's going to come right up. Everything below here is no good. Everything above, so I'm going to let them work in here. These are good. I gave you both instructions. I want to remind you to please listen and follow my requests at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, but fight clean. Good luck. Well, neither guy could even look at each other at that point. And Tony Harrison taking his good, sweet time getting to the middle of the ring. Charlo is the favorite here. Even after losing his title, you'd have to bet $275 on Jamel Charlo to win 100. Betting $100 on Tony Harrison would get you $200. That from Fox Bet. And we're ready to go. Main event, both with a chip on their shoulder one year later. And we're underway. WBC. 154 pound championship and Jermell Charlo comes out winging a hook and misses. See, and he's coming out exactly like he said he was. He put his head down, he took a step in and he whipped the hook just like that. Now, stop, Tony Harris is going to lean stop. on his back. Break. Break. Back. 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 It looks like Char Charlo's determined to, to get inside somehow and get close to Tony. Tony's going to have to take that down. And there is Harrison with the jab. He's got a good, long, straight jab. I was going to ask you that too, Joe. Brian Kenny with Lennox Lewis and Joe Goose at ringside main event here. Is it in Harrison's best interest to pick up the pace since he does fight very well being selected? Well, look, as long as he's being accurate and effective, you know, it's, it's, one, it's one thing to throw punches and one thing to throw punches just, you know, because people expect you to throw more punches. You throw them when you have to and when you're effective when you need to. And I think that's what ultimately Harrison's going to do. He's a smart fighter. He's not going to be a rational fighter. Right, and Harrison right. there leading with the jab, but Lennox we saw in the first fight, he's very effective with a counter jab, waiting for something to happen, and he has a quick answer. Oh yeah, I mean, this is a boxer puncher mover, and uh, you know, why mix it up when you don't have to? You know, all his advantages is from the, from the outside, so he should use that. And, and he just and illustrated that there. Yeah, I mean, throwing good, sh uh, snappy jabs, this is what he's supposed to do. You he's know, able to answer, he waits for a punch to come out, and then he pops a shot. And I tell you what, that helped him with the judges the first time around. It's very visible when you end an exchange with a jab to the head. Yeah. Well, it's about being first. You know, after an exchange, you still come out of the exchange and you be first again. And he's first with that jab all the time. Charlo took out his frustration after the postponement in June in Jorge Cota with a third-round stoppage, two spectacular right hands to end that fight. And he, again, called Harrison a fraud for bowing out of that fight with an angle that seemed a bit harsh, Joe, didn't it? Well, you know, that, you know, may be held true, but right now, uh, you know, the, the important thing is what's going on in the ring here, and 
Charlo is kind of stalling a little bit. I thought he would be picking up that pace in the first round. And he's allowing Harrison just to kind of set up here and do something like that. Get a shot off. He should be trying to knock the chest pieces off, like we said, and upset the apple cart and get inside with some head movement and pressure and fast feet. And he's not doing it. Harrison has been able to already here in round one after Charlo came out firing to kind of, as they say, take the air out of the ball, slow things down. It's right. So it's tactical already, strategic, and a right hand lands. Not a very hard right hand, but it landed a scoring shot by Harrison. So once again, much like the first fight, these could be close rounds, but if Harrison is winning rounds close, he can pile them up and get a win and defend his title. Final second, round number one. There are the Charlo twins. Jermel and Jamal growing up, excellent athletes, and there is Jamal Charlo watching his brother. He just comes off a knockout win over Dennis Hogan. That's a nice win. He's 30 and 0. And he's moved up to middleweight, clearing the path at junior middleweight for his brother Jermel. First round, interesting, tactical once again. Tony Harrison seemingly doing enough. Harrison here, opening things up in the blue trunks. Charlo in the, uh, the black with orange fringe and orange hair to boot. Jack Reese with the warning. No blood. You okay? Yeah, you can see Charlo is really in business. He's so serious right now. I was expecting him to come out a lot harder, but he's showing a lot of patience, which is which is good. I think he's going to manage to attack in certain at certain times. He just warming up and taking his time right now and trying to look at the open and see where he can get in. And that jab seems to be the, the dominant factor so far early in this fight. It's obviously very early, but already Tony Harrison able to earn respect from Charlo and keep him at a bit of a distance. And there's a good left and right hand from Harrison. Stop, stop. There's a great straight right hand, but that's what fighting. Charlo is going to get if he stays on the outside of the chest player. Harrison's got a long reach. He's got a fast right hand and a great jab. Again, Charlo was doing right, the right thing at the beginning of the round. He's going to have to take chances Tony, to get you, close Tony. to Stop. Harrison to get anything done. Yeah, Harrison's going to grab him like that, him. but that doesn't look well either to the judges. So, and he's got he's to show some patience as well. He's throwing big winging shots, hyper-aggressive. So far, Harrison's able to see it coming. Yeah. Charlo ha cannot get wild right now. He's got to keep his composure. Charlo landed a nice wild right hand. And, yeah, but he can get nasty. Yeah, but he got he can get caught coming in. Well, yeah, exactly. But you got to take chances. If we asked him, are you are you willing to take those chances? You know. So you like him winning those shots? There's a hard shot. Both men firing at the same time. He's got to make it good. I think it's too early to win shots. Well, you know what? You know, no time like the present as far as I'm concerned. You know. That's an interesting point. You wonder if Charlo will be able to get into a good rhythm. Body shot by Charlo that night. Again, sometimes you can get out of your game, not get in a rhythm early on. And the BBC, we're I got on a little title cut at 154 by pounds by Sam Junior Middle. I also mean Super Walter, you know what I mean? Charlo looks like he's got a cut. I'm not sure. The referee just pointed to his head. No. Yeah, they did have a clash of heads earlier. It looks small, it's not bleeding much, but work out here, work right. out. Come on. Just a small abrasion. Oh! oh This is what I was Five, talking about right there, Brian. Six, seven, eight. I know you're okay. You're good. Give me brother. Six seconds left. Let's go. Six yeah, seconds. Same. Too far away. You won't have that opportunity. Charlo gets a knockdown here in the early going just before the end of the round, and he makes his statement in trying to reclaim his title. It seemed like Harrison was, to your point, Lennox, a bit off balance, but it was Charlo who put him down with a punch. Yeah, he was basically... Backing up. Was right on the chin. And they were actually punching together. Both guys were punching at the same time. Charlo got hit with two short right hands right there. And like I said, you're going to have to take chances. Are you willing to get hit coming in just like that? And he got hit two right right hands. But that's what he got from it, see? Because he got it close enough to counter. And he hit him with that good left hook right hand. Tony Harrison yep. should be on the outside boxing and moving and being the, the mad professor boxer tonight. This is not going to serve him well by sitting there doing this at all with Charlo. The grazing right hand there. You can see Charlo now is finally fired up. He looked like he was just about to start getting frustrated. Put a big hook, grazing right hand. Makes it a 10-8 round Number in three. round two as Charlo was able to establish his championship presence. Let's see how Tony Harrison answers. He's the champ now, round three. 
here at 154 pounds. Title is on the line, and already Sarlo winging shots. Aggressive Harrison ducking out of the way. Enough, enough. It has to be controlled aggression. He can't be, can't leave himself wide open like that. Just missed with the hook. Firing shots, and Harrison is on the ropes. This is a danger zone, fellas. Again. Yeah, what, what Charles should be doing when he's instead of winging the shots in the head, he should be hitting the arms, the body before he gets to the head. Harrison, of course, to his credit, did really well defensively on the ropes right there. Look at that shot hit out of the by Charlo. Charlo's able to land with a little more regularity. Harrison tries to fire back. And, Joe, to your point, if Harrison's going to stay on the ropes, this could be an early night. Charlo is obviously determined, fired up. Look at the punches landed in round three. 11 to 2 for Javel Charlo. Harrison's regained his composure. He's looking to land something himself, and he's actually back to Charlo, yeah. which I think is a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Like Harrison throws straight punches, and Charlo throws, you know, looping punches. And whichever one, if they throw at the same time, Harrison will get through with his punches right. a lot cleaner. Harrison. Yeah. Harrison able to land right hands and an uppercut as well. And Charlo came back with a nice little left up with himself. He could have a fascinating championship fight here. Already one knockdown in round two. Hook lands by Harrison, the last, or one of the last Kronk fighters on the international scene. That right hand lands, and it looks like Charlo's mouthpiece has popped out. Yeah. Harrison able to take that mouthpiece right out. Charlo fires back. Jack Reese will wait to put right, stop, that stop, stop, back stop. into the action. Right, 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 right. Relax, relax. It looks like it's Harrison's Oh, mouthpiece. that was Harrison's that came out. Huh? How about that? And Harrison's got some blood coming out of his nose right now, probably from that left up that he got hit with. Right look, hand. He fire. I, I thought it was I thought it was Harrison that that landed as the mouthpiece popped out. How did it land? Ch come out of Harrison's mouth. Yeah, Charlo needs to keep that that left hand up because you know Harrison's are still dangerous with that right hand, and they're coming across straight. Let's watch this again, and you'll see the mouthpiece come out. The right hand lands, and this he just spits it out. Yeah, it just yeah. somehow from an That's it. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. It was actually he, he was part of his breathing. You know, when he's throwing the shot, he's breathing at the same time, which that's what pushed it up. Good body shots by Harrison, strafing left hand there to the body of Charlo. Oh, look at him, he's back to Charlo right now. This is a real reversal of uh, tactics. Yeah, this is this is fascinating already. Look at Harrison, fire back, head, and then body. He's the really going to the Detroit is getting after it. Really going to the body well. He landed two great shots, one on the belt line and one around the elbow. And he's, uh, Look, he's sitting in the pit right now. Lands a hook as well. Tony Harrison showing his championship pedigree. Firing back, was put on the deck, but fires back in round three. There's some action from Charlie. He's through that double hook right hand, back with another hook in the right hand. That was a five, six, seven punch combination. Two uppercuts, and that's what did the nose in. And, and you see Harrison coming back with a left and a right and a, and a body punch. Straight punches, straight to the target, very accurate. Brian Kenny, Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, along with Heidi Antrol here, ringside. Round number four, it's been fascinating so far as Tony Harrison able to keep his composure. Let's go to Heidi Antrol now in the corner. Thank you very much, Ali. What adjustments do you want Tony Harrison to make as we start this fourth round? Well, he doesn't necessarily have to make any adjustments. He just got to continue doing what he's doing. I need him to finish with more than two punches. He's throwing a beautiful right hand, but he's leaving the, the hook off the right hand. So I need, I need him to throw three or more punches and then get them in front of him. He, he's doing exactly what we want him to do now. Backing him up, put the pressure on him now. There you go. There you go. There it is. Thanks so much, Ali. Brian, we'll send it back to you. Heidi, thank you. That's Tony Harrison's father, Ali Salam El. As Harrison was able again to regain his composure, reestablish himself in this fight because it is not easy. Charlo is really bringing some weight in that last round. Again, according to our unofficial judge, Marcos Viegas, he gives it to Tony Harrison, who's now up two rounds to one, but again, with the knockdown, obviously, a 10 8 round in the second. Harrison would like to make this a tactical battle. Charlo would like to make it a war. So far, we've seen success on both sides, Lennox. Yeah, we have. Um, you know, Charles is coming ahead. Like I said, you know, he's got to straighten up his punches a little bit. Or if he's going to get wild, let him get wild up against the ropes with Harrison. Putting Harrison up against the ropes so Harrison can, can escape. Charles Charlo throwing a career high 89 punches in this first round. Punches landed in favor of Jamal Charlo. Again, that's a good hard hook from Charlo. 
and right hand to the body. Harrison back with a hook. Two hooks. And there you see right there, Shoulder with a big advantage in the fourth round. But there is hard hitting action going on right now. This is really, really five star quality uh, boxing in the hunting There's a great counter punch by Charlo. But uh, Harrison's been taking the action to him, landing good body shots off touches to the head. He'll go back downstairs quickly. And he's chosen to walk down Charlo, which is an amazing thing. I don't think we would have fought that. And he even said he wasn't going to do it, but here he is. Back to Charlo up, landing a little uppercut, some little shots to the body, right hand down. And then the occasional counter from Charlo, like that. I think Charlo Charlo's making a fight. And uh, Joe, to what you were saying, we expected a fight like the first fight, but on Bruce a lot more. And we're seeing that at just a higher level of aggression. Charlo now firing back with the combination. Final seconds, round four, hard-hitting title fight. Part of the controversy a year ago was that Jamel Charlo outlanded Tony Harrison. A lot of people thought he won that fight, but CompuBox had a good read on this, pointing out that Charlo, while he outlanded Tony Harrison, he was within five punches of him in nine of the 12 rounds. Again, not all punches were created equally, and the judging came out in favor of Tony Harrison. Again, 7-5 or 8-4 depending on which judge you went to, but it was a unanimous decision. Tony Harrison became the champ, but here it is all on the line, and it's been a fascinating back and forth so far in terms of style and aggression between these two. Much different fight from Tony Harrison, as he promised. Now, he, he said he'd probably box a little bit more, but he said in sparring, he was sitting in the pocket all the time, and he said, I do well when I spar, but sometimes when I get in the fight, I decide to move backwards. Let's go to Heidi Antrol right now in the corner with Derek James for Jamel Charlo. Thank you very much, Brian. Derek, we've seen a very aggressive Jamel Charlo thus far, taking some risks. What would you like to see from him here going forward? A little bit more jab, a little bit more movement, a little bit more stepping around. But you, he's going to start to do it, you know. Tony's trying to mix it up, you know, trying to do a little counterpoint. But he's doing really well, but more jab and more movement. Thanks, Derek. Brian, back to you. All right, Heidi, thank you. Good body work there by Charlo. Again, in that first fight, Charlo was uh, at times really just showing off his defense, had beautiful head movement throughout, thought he was aggressive enough, but this is a very different fight. Yeah, Char Charlo was uh, able to land those body shots. He actually turned southpaw on the inside, just like that, like that. And he came out with, with a uh, left hook and uh, a right hand of the body. But, uh, again, I'm surprised, and I'm not too sure I agree with what uh, the corner's telling Charlo to back up. It just seems like you, if you give uh, uh, Harrison a chance to walk you down like this, he's going to put his hands on you and both hands. Well, part of the reason he's probably doing that is, you know, probably trying to get Harrison to open up a little bit, throw some shots so so that Charlo can throw some punches within there. What got Harrison to open up was when Charlo put the pressure on and made him open up. So you got to make him open up, not open up. It's up for you. I just don't think he's going to open up. Right in, partially blocked there by Harrison. But to your point, Harrison, if this fight is fought at distance, you got to figure the favor of Tony Harrison who lands right hand. This guy was favoring Tony Harrison, and he's not boxing. Yeah, you got to your point, Joe. You want Tony Harrison wants chess. He doesn't want to brawl. He wants to stand. And not look, he, look, he's getting away with walking down Charlo. He's getting away with it. I was going to say, by Harrison. So, in other words, I'm saying if he was forced to box, he could do that. Yeah, but he's not even being forced to box right now. Ha Harrison's the sharper boxer inside right now, especially when it comes to close quarters. You know, showing good body punches, good left hooks, and good uppercuts. I agree, because Charles not making it right. He's sitting there, and uh, he's getting out hustle on the inside. Right, and, and with all those times, you, you were getting those two body shots landed right there, those scoring shots, and it could be another round of the books. Could be, we're not sure. We don't know, we never know, but you think it could go in another round. That's a good right hand. Another round could go to Harrison, much like a year ago in Brooklyn. Final 20 seconds of the fifth round. One knockdown in this fight already. A big hook and then a grazing right hand from Charlo in the second round. Harrison has come back nicely and is boxing beautifully. Controlled aggression by the champion. But if you're wondering what Jamal Charlo has to say, let's go to Heidi Antrol again. Heidi? Thank you very much. 
here with a man with a very vested interest here. I know I've seen you watching the, every round by round. What have you seen from your brother, and what do you, does he need to do more of? Um, I see good patience. You know, um, I just think he needs to get a little bit more aggressive on the outside, but he's doing good right now. Was the game plan for him to come out here and be a little bit more patient? Um, it's to be patient, be, but be aggressive and, and, and land the right shots. And he's doing good. He's definitely being aggressive. What did you say to your brother? I saw you backstage in the locker room with him before the fight. I told him we got to take it to him. We got to take his heart. This dude got a lot of confidence, but he don't know what he into. So we'll see you tonight. I know you're coming off of a great win. When will we see you back in action? Uh, we should be in, in May. Looking forward to it. As always, thank you very much, Jamal Charlo. Guys, we'll send it back to you, Brian. Heidi, thank you. Jamal again off a knockout win against a pretty tough guy, Dennis Hogan. He stays unbeaten. Jamal Charlo back in it here, and I wonder, is he winning rounds beyond the round that he got the knockdown? Well, that's, yeah, we have to be decided. I want to get to what Jamal said. Jamal said he's got to be aggressive, okay? And take the, take the attack to him. He's not doing that. Hey, now Marcos Viegas, our unofficial judge, has all three or four rounds, not with a knockdown, going the way of Harrison. Marcos, what do you think so far? Nice little showboating there from Harrison. He's been blocking a lot of these punches. I have him up 48 to 46 because of the work that he's doing on the inside. He's doing excellent work scoring to the top and more importantly to the body. And these aren't just regular body shots. These are digging the hooks to the body that are catching my attention. Marcos, thank you. Marcos Villegas again, our unofficial judge, just to give us an indication of how judges could be scoring this fight. And here's the showboating for Harrison. Well, yeah, and right there, I would have just jumped right on him. Right. You know, if, if I'm the you, but, but uh, Jamal actually backed off for a second. You know? Now, that does not uh, do anything to the judges. I don't think it's even doing much to infuriate Charlotte, but back to the actual boxing, which is the, the basic point of this whole night. You could make a case that beyond that knockdown in the second round, Tony Harrison could, could be winning every other round. And that's the way Marcos Villegas has it right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, reasonable to think that. Good exchange there by Harrison on the inside. Charlo firing back. Good body shot with the right hand by Harrison. Tony Harrison is keeping his hands up. Real nice, real the tight. Goal. The closer he gets, the more he closes off the middle for the uppercut, and he closes off the right hand. He's being smart. And now Charlotte gets on the inside, and if they're winning shots, it could favor Charlotte. Yeah, I don't think Charlotte should back up. He needs to push the push the action forward. He needs to be throwing a lot more punches, a lot more combination punches. Harrison is landing as well, landing those body shots. Right, he's landing. He also landed a, a few seconds ago, nice little right up and up up the chin too. Real subtle stuff on the inside, like that little right up and And a right hand to answer to punctuate. Charlo firing back as well, throwing combinations as the fight is now at close range. He's throwing one or two at a time, and that ain't going to do it because Harris' uh, defense is so tight. A couple of shots from Charlo ain't really going to do anything. Again, Harrison, one of the last fighters to be trained by Hall of Famer Emmanuel Stewart. Toured through Europe when Emmanuel Stewart had Vladimir Klitschko, so kind of the last of the prop fighters. That great era of 70s, 80s, and 90s. Carries the flag now, and he's doing an outstanding job here trying to defend this time. Great body shots, too. Right? And, and what what is it? Is it? to your point, one thing's for sure, Harrison ain't fighting off his back foot in this fight, is it? No, he's not. Tony Harrison appears to be winning rounds. Charlotte with the knockdown could be very close. Dominic Brazil there. In the audience here in California, heavyweight contender. Just saw Mike McCallum there in the background, the body snatcher. Errol Spence says he wants to go in May. Welterweight champion could be ready in the spring or the summer. There and speaking is. of Detroit royalty, man. there's the there hitman, Tommy Hearns. Yes, sir. Seven-time seven world champion. I asked him how many, uh, how many champions. I said three or four. He said I had seven championships. He goes, that's all I wanted. <laughs> I mean, Hearns an all-time great, obviously yeah. trained by Emmanuel Stewart, as was Tony Harrison. And the super bad nickname comes from one of Stewart's fighters in the 70s and 80s. And again, one of the all-time great gentlemen in the sport as well, the late Emmanuel Stewart. Round seven, Tony Harrison, Jamel Charlo. Marcos Villegas gives round six to Tony Harrison as well. Again, this is just an indication of how the judges could be scoring this fight. I would say, just to take a breath here for a second, this has been an outstanding answer from both men. 
some nice debate, and we've, we've, they've upped the ante. This is a better fight. It, it is, and you know, Charo needs to be really when he's when he's throwing his punches, he's got to look where he's, he's placing his punches and make sure he's placing them around the hands of of, of Harrison, so his his punches are scoring. Harrison's really become real comfortable just walking down Charlo right now with his hands up. He sees everything, and then he decides to do stuff like that. Right, he's very you know? calm. He's well shoulders relaxed, firing off right hands, multiple combinations. Lands an uppercut there, and able to move shoulders head. You can see the, the, the guy who's fighting the different fight tonight is Harrison. Okay. And Charlo needs to be concerned because every time he gets out of a, a, a clinch or even a, a, an exchange, that's when Harrison is coming back and catching him while he's leaving the clinch that or was, exchange. By the way, that was a good combination. I'm still going to let that pass by Charlo. I think he drew a little blood from the nose of Harrison as he whacks another hook off the head of Tony Harrison. He's got to do that more often. He's got to actually shorten up his punches too. Good right hand. Shaking the head from Charlo saying he's not hurt, but they're landing. I think a lot of fans out there thought Jamel Charlo would come out here, bump Rush Harrison, and take him out. It looked like that was a possibility in the second round, but every other round has not been that way. And it seemed like that tactic was working, and he abandoned it right after the second round, which is surprising. And Harrison needs to, uh, um, uh, I mean, Charlo needs to, if he wants to get a little bit more glory out of this, this round, he needs to put Harrison up against the ropes. Charlo's saying, look, I want to be more aggressive. I want to win the fight round by round. He's not really heeding that advice. Could be letting rounds slip. That could be close. Now, again, you could be surprised. Again, fellas, by the end, depending on what the judges have, wild uppercut misses by Charlo. We're just pointing out what a judge could be looking at. Well, it doesn't look to me like Charlo's going to really outslip him on the inside. And certainly not on the outside. I think what's going to have to happen is Charlo's going to have to land a very good shot and shot that wobbles or puts Harrison down because uh, he's just getting out of the river on the inside right now. And really, the tactics that uh, he's, 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 the tactics Harrison is using is really dominating on the inside. I tell you, you're right. You see these subtle moves. There's right hands there, but a lot of uppercuts and hooks landing on Charlo. The champ looks good so far. Yeah, and, and here you see Charlo coming in with a, a good combination. One, two, three. And this is what he needs to do, throw combination punches. And here's Tony coming back with a straight right. You know, straight punches always are better than roundhouse punches. Good body punch by uh, Charlo right there. This is what he needs to do as well. They're in round eight already. World title fight at 154 pounds. Tony Harrison seemingly putting some rounds in the bank. By the way, Charlo has thrown a career high in power shots, throwing, but he's landing only 28% of them. Tony Harrison much more accurate, according to CopyBox, landing 41% of his power shots. And that's what's important landing on. In terms of what happened with Harrison in the corner, I think uh, his corner had it right. He said, look, you're putting all these rounds in the bank. He goes, keep pressuring them, keep walking them backwards, you know, so because you're winning the fight this way. And he's able to win, seemingly, if we if believe he's leading, at close range, Joe. I mean, I, we, we thought, I thought at least he'd have to be at range like this on the outside. That hasn't been the case. And we all, I think we all thought that. I think even Harrison himself and all of the, the fighter meetings we had said the same thing. He was going to have to be the chess player, the master chess player. And, and that Charlo was going to have to be aggressive. And Charlo even agreed. I have to be aggressive. The, it's really been a role reversal. It? But it's been a great fight nonetheless. And Charlo looks dangerous at all times. Anyway, one punch could turn this around. It's a good point. He's been the jab as usual from Harrison. He's got a beautiful long jab. Able to land it throughout the night. But you're right, Joe, to your point. Everything Charlo was throwing is serious. It's hard. He's already put it down. That was in round two with mainly a hook. And he's able to land another hook there. See, that left hook should have been followed up with a quick right hand. That would have been top right there. At least, you know, make him defend on both sides of his head, not just one side. See, Charlo's making a mistake right now in the sense of allowing uh, Harrison to be forced all the time. And Harrison's doing the right thing. Get that jab out there. Be first. Pile up the points. Starting to feel it now, getting a little rhythm. Able to fire off the jab. It does a little dance. He has uh, talked to Detroit over the last few months to build up for this fight, saying, look, man, you can't scare me. We talk trash back and forth, but I'm from Detroit. 
I've been through a lot. Pride is on the line, and so much on the line for his career as well. A win here solidifies his standing as a real champion. Charlo's got to do more of that. He landed two right hand, a right hand, a left hook for the body. That was a hard right hand from Harrison. That was that fires off a right hand. That's one of the better shots of the fight. Charlo able to answer back with a jab. I wonder the the playing around in the ring though. But yeah, I he's mean, gonna be leaving himself home. I mean, he feels comfortable in there. I mean, he's doing what he wants to do, but you know, you also have to be careful when he's when you're doing that type of thing. Keep it here between rounds. We're gonna go into Tony Harrison's corner, and we'll be able to hear him and his father, Ali Salam El. Listen in right now. We'll go to the corner. Okay, that's another good round. These are excellent rounds. He's still leaving my hook off on this side. You're landing a beautiful right hand. You got straight flex. All right on the money, but you're leaving it by itself. Bring that hook behind it, okay? You bring the hook behind it, you get at least a knockdown out of this. I believe you get at least a knockdown out of this. Mike can stop it. Is he definitely tired? Okay. You're doing a good job of taking, staying in control, winning the rounds. This is nine coming up, right? Hey, nine coming up. Yeah. Yep. There is the beautiful right hand that Salam L mentioned. Yeah, and, and, and here it is. Bam, right there on top of the head. But more importantly, what was being said in the corner, I think, was very important. This corner was telling him, I think you can hurt him. I think you can stop him. It was a beautiful right hand. You're winning these rounds. They're very confident in the corner, and well, they should be right now. It looks like Tony Harrison has been in control of this fight since after the second round. Do you feel that Charlo's energy is ebbing somewhat? No, I, I think he's in great shape. I think he's got energy to fight 20 rounds. It's just how he's fighting. Yeah, but you got to be affected by the body shots. You know, he's, Harrison started the body shots from uh, round one. So, you know, now we're in the middle of rounds. And, you know, he's got to have some effect. He should be affected by every shot you get hit with. And I'm sure they both are. But the point is, is that's what you train for. That's why you do your calisthenics, your workouts, so you can absorb that and keep on going. The bottom line is, it's what type of fight is Charlo fighting? He's not fighting this fight that he said he was going to fight, that I expected him to fight. And probably that Harrison expected him. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. He needs to be a little more aggressive, a lot more aggressive. A lot more aggressive. He's got to be forced. He can't be waiting for Harrison because if he's waiting for Harrison, all Harrison's going to do is throw that jab. Throw that jab and throw that right hand. And why wait for a guy to throw a jab on the right hand? you got to be forced. you got to be throwing your jab, right hand, hooks, and body punches. You know what? All these things can be true. Let's go to Marcos Villegas. Marcos, sum it up for us. How are you scoring it? I have it 76 to 75. I thought the uh, last two rounds, uh, Charlo kind of picked up the volume of his punches, just landing a little bit more. Uh, Tony, like I mentioned earlier in the fight, doing a good job of blocking a lot of these punches. A lot of these punches aren't landing flush that Charlo is throwing. But for the last two rounds, I've liked the work that Charlo's put in so far, and it's tightened up the fight. I'm a little surprised they gave the last two rounds to Charlo. Do we agree with that this yeah. fellas? Especially the last. I mean, look, the corner is not stupid over there. They, they thought they were going to win. And, and Marcus made me run. Right. I think that, that's that's the bottom line is that but Marcos saw it one way we could disagree. But, but the three but, judges could all reasonably have it either way. But, you know, we're talking about guys that have been, you know, intimately uh, 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 aware of who they've got in front of them. And that's, that's Tony Harris and what he's doing. And they think he's landing the shots and winning the rounds. And I would tend to agree with that last one. Especially just, if not nothing else, that's big right hand. Now, that being said, I got Harris in a head right hand. See, the fact that, that Charlo is against the ropes, he's got to do a lot of work to catch Harrison. Because Harrison has all that room behind him to move back. So anytime Charlo tries to amount of attack, he's got that all the room to move back. He needs to turn Harrison around and not allow him to move back and put him against the ropes. Good three-punch combination there by Tony Harrison. Doubling up on the jab, following with the right hand. Those landed. These are all close rounds. Reasonably close. Again, it's not a perfect science scoring a 10-9 round. We're going to stick around right here, keep it here on Fox. We're going to go into the corner of Jamel Charlo as we end this round. Derek James is in the corner for Jamel Charlo. Let's hear what they are saying if they feel they're winning these rounds. Listen, 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 listen. So don't stay on the road. 
Do not open up. When you shoot that jab, look for the right hand because you're shooting the right hand over the top. Continue to save the pose. Do not miss it. Make sure you keep the left hand up higher. Left hand up higher. Throw my neck. Left hand up higher. Keep popping the jab and stepping over. Look for the hook. Look for the body shot. You got to get busy. I'm going to do it. Come around here. What's that? Come around here. I can't hear you. Around is it? Ten, coming up. Listen. Are you good? Good, good, yeah. good. Listen, start, this is your position, okay, right? Start shooting the hook for the, for the body shot. Shoot the shot over, double the jab, and make it dip to the right hand. I need you to keep stepping over to the right. Now I try and do it. And keep the, you can pose in the distance like you're doing. I like, I like, I like the distance you can do. So, Goose, and your thoughts there? Well, it, it's pretty hard. The, the, the microphone really wasn't situated well there, but you can tell by the body language there's, there is there's a little bit of concern Go. in that corner right now. There's only three rounds left. We've got uh, 10, 11, and 12. And Charlo, I think, if I were in that corner, I'd be telling him, you better have three big rounds here minimum or hurt this guy bad. Charlo's picking up the pace now, yeah. Joe. Coming out of here, round 10. We'll call the championship rounds. Janelle Charlo can feel it slipping away from him. It's very possible. Harrison has put a bunch of rounds in the bank. He has been feeling it. He's been accurate throughout the fight, showing off that jab. Charlo has the knockdown now, so that is a 10-8 round back in round two. Slight advantage in punches landed for Janelle Charlo. Round two seemed like a million years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Good popping jab yeah. by Harrison. However, it's an extra point. Yeah, that's what it comes down no, to, that's the points. Exactly. They file it in round by round, and that's it. I'm just being a little snark. I know, you've been like that. <laughs> I plead guilty to that, too, Joe. No disrespect. Little dance there by the champ. Will he be the champ at the end of the night? Marcos Villegas gave that ninth round to Tony Harrison. It was in the late rounds a year ago in Brooklyn where Charlo really up the ante put his foot on the accelerator stop, 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 stop. that led to many people feeling that Charlo had you pull this head won that fight going happen. away. Okay? Little admonishment uh, there by Jack, Jack Reese. He's done a very good job tonight. Yeah, there was a, a, a punch that strayed low, but Jack Reese explained to Charlo the reason that, or, or the Harrison, the reason that hit you low is because you pulled Charlo's head down. That's something we often say, Joe, you said it earlier in the night. If you're saying the referee's name around round 10, Referee's doing a good job. Right, right, exactly. Well, Jack Reese, I tell you this California finishing the referees are the best. Jack Reese is a, 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 an old veteran. I don't mean old, but he's, he's an experienced veteran and one of the best in, in, in the country. Experience fighting important that job. Another jab lands by Harrison, and that three-punch combination that was just thrown by Charlo, all of those missing, including the one on his hip, is not a scoring area. I know, but he's doing he's doing the right thing by doing a double jab in there. You know, that's allowing him to get a closer to Harrison so he can throw that right hand, but he's got to throw not only the right hand, but uh, the left hook as well, because that was, that was what hurt Harrison in the first and the second round, so he's got to go to that again. Final 30 seconds, and we're talking a lot about the judging in this fight, because that's what it is likely to come down to. How about this note from CompuBox? These two have been within two punches lengthened of each other in seven of the nine rounds. So again, not all punches are created equally. Certainly we thought Harrison was winning some rounds as the way he's landing there. He's landing again with the right hand, but the bottom line is, a judge is looking at this round by round, and it could be extremely close. Yeah, in the last, yeah, in the last 20 seconds, he landed three great rounds. Yeah, and Final seconds of the 10th round. It's been outstanding so far. This has been a good world championship fight so far. The knockdown in round two. The hook coming from Jamel Charlo. But Tony Harrison has done some outstanding work as well. And to how close this is, it's now eight of 10 rounds where these two have been within two punches landed of each other, according to CompuBox. Round 11, the championship 12. Charlo able to back Harrison up. Harrison says, come on, man, I'm fine. Why does Charlo stop there? I don't get it. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. It's a third time. Yeah, he needs to, as soon as he does anything like that, just jump on him. I've seen guys go. Shot there by Charlo. I mean, Harrison is just he's so so experienced. He is able to feel it. He's confident. He's able to step back and know that, hey man, I'm all right. And he can sense that Charlo can't get out. Moving his head nicely.
that he just sensed a break in the action. You can yeah. smell it that Charlo had thrown his combination and now needed the second off. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Charlo is just throwing the combinations when he should be throwing the combinations and placing them. You know, being accurate with his punches and not trying to hit his arms, trying to get around his arms. Trying not to hit his elbows, trying to hit his stomach. Punches landed according to Copybox, extremely close. Now Harrison takes the lead, but just by two punches. And again, it is scored round by round. Oh! Jack Reese says take a step toward me, or he could stop this. Over a minute left. Harrison hurt again by the hook. Harrison could go down again. The ropes are keeping it it's up. Over. Now he's wobbled. Oh. And down he goes. Third knockdown of the fight. Jack oh. Reese is counting, so it's still on. Charlo is celebrating. Seven. He should not be hey, celebrating. Right. Walk over here and come back. The commissioner so should not be in Get the ring. Here. Come here. He's Charlo is celebrating. He doesn't look back. It's not over. Come on. Someone's got to tell Charlo it's not over yet. Well, he's, he's got 50 seconds left. Harrison is badly hurt. You can tell he's wobbled. Jack Reese is very close to stopping this fight. You better believe it. His head is wobbling back and forth. Charlo can get his title back, but he hasn't done it yet. Jack Reese is looking close. Jack Reese is ending it. Jamel Charlo is the champion of the world again. Harrison is protesting, but he was wobbled several times after that second knockdown. Well, let me tell you, it's you all take. down to one punch, and uh, Charlo take. was there. He's all, he was always looking dangerous. That's why you can't be fooling around in this fight, in, 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 a, in a fight. You gotta be serious all the way through because these things can happen. An emphatic statement by Charlo, who could have been down by points. You can see the resolve in him. His brother comes in, Jamal to celebrate with him. That was a very tough fight. And I tell you what, he was celebrating and the commission, a, a member of the commission got in and said, the fight's still on, get back in there. No, he, no, he thought the no fight way. was over. Everybody thought, thought the fight but was Jack over. But Jack Reese was counting. No, if he had turned I, around I didn't and looked, think Jack the fight was, was over. And no, no, but I'm saying he no, thought no, it was over. Yeah. But I'm just saying that the inspector jumped the gun. He should have stayed outside the ropes no matter what. Charlo was just celebrating whether the fight was being stopped or there was a count going on. He can turn his back. There's no law against him turning his no, back true. to the I, referee. I just thought it wasn't count. to his advantage if he thought, hey, you know, adrenaline, you know, suddenly drains. As I'm he just thinks saying it's there's open. no reason for anybody else to run into that ring no, during the count. Jack Reese was doing his job, counting. He gave Harrison every opportunity. But let me ask you, Lennox Lewis, do you agree? There he is celebrating. We can take a look at this first. As he goes up, and he's celebrating up on the top rope. But that fight is not over. Okay, that's fine. And he'll eventually, his, he'll eventually find out from the referee the fight ain't over. Yeah, there should be nobody in there That's right. at that point. All right, let me ask you, yeah. the final stoppage, Lennox, do you agree or disagree? Well, it's funny because, you know, although Harrison looked like he was out on the feet, but mentally he felt okay, but his equilibrium was gone. And, you know, some, like it's up to the referee's discretion. And if the referee felt that the fight should have been stopped, then at that point it should have been stopped because you never know what could happen afterwards. You know, he could say, come and fight, and then all of a sudden the worst knockout in the world could happen. His head was snapping to and fro. You know, when your head, head is on a swivel like that, you can get hurt. Joe Goosen, all night, we have faced this a bunch of times, and you have been in favor, you've been in favor of letting the fight go. Do you agree that that should keep going, or do you like the stoppage? That's a tough. That's a tough call right there. I, I would probably say this: Had Charlo not turned his back on Harrison when he heard him first over there, he could have ended it right then and there. Now they're coming over. Charlo's coming over to Harrison. Let's see what happens here. Great job. By the way, two of the three judges had Jamel Charlo ahead. It was 94-95 and then 96-93 twice. So that's the way the judges had it. They had Charlo ahead, and that's before these knockdowns. And, and, and here, here we're going to look at the replay and look at the first knockdown. And Charlo, it was on that left hook again. Just when you think 
you know, you have your right hand up, it gets through and it touches you on the chin. It touched touched him on the chin and he went down. Yeah, and that 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 hook went inside of his right hand. Here's the second knockdown. They both leaned in and bam, Charlo threw that left hook, right hand, left uppercut didn't land cleanly, but buckled him right there. That landed cleanly. Two in a row, three in a row, four, five. That was uh, there's where Char there's where Charlo went to go yeah. celebrate. And that that was the second knockdown. And, and here's the end of the fight. This is this is where the referee came over. And Charlo was had Harrison up against the rope, showing some good shots. You know, Harrison seemed like he was coherent to a point, but the referee didn't want to see any more and stopped the fight. Hey, you know, look, uh, Harrison had been down twice, so Jack Reese is looking at it with that in mind, that this guy's That's been right. down twice in this round, and then he looks at his, as his head is snapping back and forth. That's right. Yeah, he's fully and within his rights to end that fight. And plus, you know, uh, Harrison didn't look wasn't looking at Charlo. He lost he his did. visual he point did. of view right. where Charlo was. So any shot that Charlo was going to throw, that was going to be a heavy punch, he was going to get knocked out from that. So or hurt badly. Harrison, of course, protested afterwards. He's very game, but he needed a few seconds just to gather his senses and get it back. But the stoppage was weighed by Jack Reese. Perhaps someone will see it as controversial, but there were a number of knockdowns, including two in that round before the stoppage was made. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 28 seconds in round number 11. Our referee in charge, Jack Reese, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is the new and now the two-time WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Jermel Iron Man Charlo. Vindication for Jermel Charlo. He was tested mightily on this night. It was tactical, it was excellent, it was exciting. We go to the punches landed by CompuBox. Charlo with the slight advantage. Again, at one point, eight of the 10 rounds were decided by two punches landed. That's extraordinary. Power punches, Charlo with the advantage. And again, the judges had Charlo ahead. We didn't know if that was going to be the case. Harrison did his share in this fight too. Yeah, it was a close call. It was a close fight. And, and, and we're gonna um, get to Heidi right now. Let's, let's, let's see what, what Heidi says with Jamel. Thank you very much. Well, I know you missed that thing on your shoulder, but boy, did you get it back tonight. And did you get it back the way you said you were gonna get it back? I have to ask you though, you got up on the ropes before the fight was over. You thought it was over. Who, who told you? Did you see the ref or was it Lennox who was actually waving you back to tell you to get back? The action's still underway. That's the second time that happened to me in my career. Uh, I thought it was over. I ain't no referee though, so it should have been over on that first knockdown. But uh, hey, I got that bill back. It took me a while. I got it out in the 11, but I didn't leave it up to the judges. Most definitely did not do that tonight. I have to ask you, you said you were gonna come in with more punching power. We saw you come out aggressive, but he was able to, to put you against the ropes a lot in this fight. What, what was happening there? And, and... Hey, Tony, he's, a, he's a, a former champion. And he come to fight. He had a lot on the line, he had pressure on him. I did what I had to do. I went in there, I, I dictated, I dominated, and I knocked him out. You most definitely did. In terms of that first knockdown, how much confidence did that give you in this fight? In the second round, the first It let him know and me know that the power real. Better avoid it, respect it, or they're going to check it. What did Derek just say to you? I don't even know, but boxing match. This is what it's about, boxing. It's a good boxing match. Shout out to my manager for being able to put me back in this thing right away. Shout out to Fox for, for, for being a network to showcase this talent. And, 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 and 2020 finna be real. 2020 finna get live, but baby, yeah. I have to ask you, because there was so much animosity between the two of you. I saw you guys uh, have words after this fight. What was said, and is, is this water under the bridge now? Well, listen, I'm a gentleman at the end of the day. I got a family to feed, and so do he. And he got in there to do what he, got, he had to do, and I did what I had to do. I made it victorious, made the best man win. So I showed my respect as good sportsmanship. But at the end of the day, I don't like the dude. Period. <laughs> Would you fight him again ever? No, yeah, we'll get it in. It don't matter. But I'm off to bigger and better things. All right, next year, we've got a big fight coming up in January. J-Rock will look to defend his titles. We haven't had an undisputed 
champion in this division since 2004. The last one to do it was Winky Wright. Before that, it goes back to 1975. Would you like that fight, that winner, next? We the history-making twins, and I'm down for whatever make history. We did what we had to do. I'm gonna enjoy this Christmas with my family. I'm gonna sit back and we're gonna celebrate and have a good time. He held the title too long. I had to come back and get it. Congratulations on a great win for you here tonight. Let's head over to Tony Harrison. Tony, I see that look of disappointment on your face. I know you came here to do business. You came out and put on a great performance. Ultimately, at the end of the day, do you feel like this was stopped too quickly? Jack is the championship referee. Um, I ain't gonna question whatever he saw. He was the better man. I started getting a little lax. Got, got caught hooking in between hooks. He earned it. I ain't mean, shit I can say. Nigga earned the motherfucking shit right now. I mean, <laughs> I hate it. He earned it. A really humble Tony Harrison. Your father told me throughout this camp you've been, you've become more humble since becoming a champion and now losing your belt. I see that in you. A lot of sacrifice. You went down to St. Pete. You worked really hard for this. How was this camp different for you, and what was the game plan coming in here tonight? I mean, the game plan was to, was to do a little bit of boxing, but being off a year, um, the shots he was hitting me with, it wasn't even like they was hurting, it's just like my body just taking that year off. My body was just like, you know what I'm saying, what's going on right now? You know what I mean? It was just, it wasn't used to that shit again. So, you know I mean? like I said, he ain't no excuse. He earned it. He hit me between shots. He earned it. I feel like I was doing good. I feel like I was dogging it. The, the, the guy that's supposed to be the dog got caught slipping though in between. You know what I mean? Like, I, like one thing I always say is I never trade offense for defense. That's what I did. He called me. And uh, water under the bridge? No, I didn't water under the bridge, man. Uh, I would love to do it one more time, man. And, you know, Detroit, we needed that bad as fuck. We needed that bad. You know what I mean? And uh, I feel like I let us down. I feel like I let me down. Damn. Tony. You were the champion. It's okay. You put on an amazing performance tonight. What's next for you? I mean, I, you know, I, I think Al. I think Al. I think Fox. Um, it's one and one. Hopefully, we do it again. You know, I just, you know, I, I gotta go back to the drawing board, tighten a couple things up, man. Like what? Oh man. We really, don't, don't trade offense for defense. I need just caught me in between. I feel like I was doing good. I feel like I was, you know, what I'm saying coasting. You know what I mean? The only time I feel like I was getting caught is when I was getting to a little too lax. Got a little too lax, got hit. Jack did what he, what, he, what he thought was best for me. It is what it is. Back to the drum board.